Welcome back. David Brenner and Barry McGuigan with you on Boxing's Night of the Year here at the Grosvenor House, the Pro Box Awards. We've seen Chris Pyatt get named our Fighter of the Year for 1993. And now someone who might have a designs on the award for 1994. Little Francis Ampofo, the flyweight champion of Great Britain, against Albert Mazankabala of Zambia. This for the Commonwealth flyweight title vacated by Alfred Katai, who we saw win the title on Pro Box. We have all the good stuff, you know. Here is a Zambian, 29 years of age. Here's the record. Now, we saw him last December fight Johnny Armour for the Bantamweight title. And Armour, as you know, stopped him. But maybe flyweight is, uh, is a bit away from the Sankabala, we shall see. We forgot to add, David, that in actual fact, Johnny Armour needed to stop him. He was well behind. Yes. It was the last round. And uh, Usain Kabala was, uh, was uh, winning this fight and going into the last round, and Johnny Armour needed to stop his win. But I have to say that when these guys come down from bantamweight to play with at this weight, you know, it takes an awful lot out of them, you know? Well, that's, that's true enough. And Francis M. Pofo getting into the ring. And uh, while Francis gets in the ring, a chance for us to welcome a brand new viewer at the Pro Box. That's Olivia Ampofo, who was born, oh, just a couple of weeks ago, the 12th of June. Nine pounds, five ounces. So well done, Francis. And well done, his lady Emma. And uh, a long and healthy life to Olivia. Now then, the two men are gloving up. Something that's not done, I hasten to add. No, they don't do that too much, but while we uh, watch them do that in the ring, we're going to take a, a look at Francis Ampofo, a man who we've seen really right from the very early days of his professional career up to the time that he is now a champion. I guess he's best known for two epic battles, or three epic battles, really, with Robbie Regan. Now, Regan wrecked Francis's unbeaten record when they were both novice professionals, and they fought this war in Cardiff when Regan was the defending British champion. Now, you see that awful cut on Regan's left eye? That was enough to force a late, late stoppage. Mickey Van, the referee on that night, gave... Robbie, every single chance that Francis was a champion. And to his eternal credit, he agreed immediately to give Regan a rematch, and that took place in Cardiff just before Christmas in 1991. Once again, it went the full 12-round trip. Regan dominated the early exchanges, and from what I remember of that contest, maybe Francis just woke up a little bit too late that night. A marvellous contest, but Regan once again a champion. And so, here to the Grosvenor House Hotel, just a year after the last Regan fight, James Drummond, we've seen him, and that's what Francis and Pofo thought of his chances, and Pofo on his way to becoming the flyweight champion of Great Britain. He had Drummond down twice in that particular contest, and Adrian Morgan had no doubts as to the winner at the end of 12 rounds. Emphatic win for little Francis Ampofa, the reigning British champion, and now looking to become the new Commonwealth flyweight champion. That is our main event here on Pro Box tonight. Now, both boys are gloved up. Let's go back into the ring and join Alan Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the main attraction of the evening, promoted by Barry Home for Matchroom Boxing and sponsored by the Daily and Sunday Middle newspapers. And this is a flyweight contest at eight stone over 12 rounds each of three minutes duration for the vacant Commonwealth Flyweight Championship. 
Your timekeeper is Bob Edgeworth of Crawley. And when the bell rings and the action begins, your referee for the contest, Larry O'Connell of Kent. Your international matchmaker, Frank Turner of London. Presenting and introducing in the red corner with the white and blue striped shorts with 20 wins from 25 contests, 12 inside the distance, the reigning flyweight champion of Zambia, Albert Musankambala. And his opponent in the blue corner with the white shorts with 10 wins from 12 contests, six inside the distance from London, the reigning British flyweight champion, Francis and Pofo. Ladies and gentlemen, at the weigh-in today, Albert Munch Kabbala scaled 7 stone, 12 pounds, 14 ounces. Francis and Pofo, 7 stone, 13 pounds, 14 ounces. I thank you. Well, and Pofo came in spot on the weight. That's exactly the way to do it. And, you know, you have to say to yourself, Musan Kabbala coming down from bantamweight and coming in at 7 stone, 12 and 14 ounces. That's a hell of a drop. Yes, it is. Big drop. We shall see how much that's weakened him. A known quantity, former Commonwealth Games bronze medalist. And as we say, fought and lost to Johnny Armour here just some six Second months ago. Round one was scheduled for 12. And you can see Francis, not the name of his wife, and his new little baby daughter, embroidered on the legs of his boxing trunks, Emma and Olivia. Inspired with many African fighters. I can tell you they're all very durable and strong guys, really strong. They take an incredible punishment. They're, they throw punches from unusual angles and can come back at you and they've got great stamina. It's as if these guys that are born near the equator are just <laughs> tougher guys. But, um, he produced a tremendous performance against Johnny Armour. Johnny Armour pulled it out of the bag in the last round, but uh, he showed that night that he was a really tough and durable guy. And there's going to be a question mark over his strength at flyweight. And, and coming down from 8 stone 6 to 7 stone 12 and 14 ounces, a lot of weight. And for a man of 29 years old, kind of an effect on his stamina. No question about that. He's starting off very assertively here, but picked up a beautiful left hook, and that shook him right to his boots from Mampofo. And Puff has been accused of being slow and one-paced, but very strong and very powerful, in particular when he gets onto a roll, when he gets his punches going, he can be really powerful. And he's beginning to pick his punches now. He's becoming more of a, of a boxer. He picks his shots and programs his tactics very well. Nothing rushed, everything relaxed, knows what he's doing. Oh, those are good shots of the body. Doubling that right uppercut. Left hook, right hook, and then right uppercut. Unusual combination, but strong. Look at how powerful his arms are. Oh, a good left, left hook, and he's really hurting. Oh, he certainly is. Was that come out as a big wobbled. trouble there? He was wobbled. This is the first round, it was a good combination, and he looked very unsteady indeed. the right hook that Johnny Armour got him with. There's a left, Another hook, from right, left hook to the body there from Ampofo. Those are really hurting was that about good start from Francis. All oh, those shots of the body are beautiful, the perfect shots. He's reaching with them too. Mazakabala really grimacing there. Those shots are really hurting him. Oh well, that's beautiful stuff. I'm really impressed with young Francis. He's doing very well now. It's impressive. Good round. Indeed it was a good opening round from Francis and Pofo. Very professional. Oh, Francis and Pofo. 
Yeah, one of the few men in the flyweight division who could probably eyeball baby Jake McLala. You never know, there might be one day. Stranger things have happened. Well, I think uh, Bobby Regan might have first call on the little South African. Paul landed some beautiful punches, placed every one of them. Knew exactly what he was doing. Left hook, right hook around the side. Watched the shots to the body. Tried the uppercut when Mozakabala fell forward. But his corners, particular his body shots were really well placed. He's reaching around the side and hitting the short ribs. That's where it really hurts. Second round of this 12 rounder for the vacant Commonwealth flyweight title at the Grosvenor House. Francis Ampofo in the white trunks, the white boxing boots with green trim. The Zambian Albert Masankabala, the white trunks with the blue trim. Ampofo is looking really strong and he's, he's very compact. Look at the way he tightens up on the inside. And, He's not throwing clusters of punches, he's picking all his shots, he's letting Mazakabala come to him. And Mazakabala is now beginning to do the right thing, getting on his bike. And this is the sort of guy that always gives Mpofo trouble. Somebody who moves and jabs and moves and throws quick fire combinations and gets on his bike. The guys that trade with him always come a cropper. The others are just hitting Mpofo on the arms, making no impression at all. his way in, punching light until he gets close, and then he's planting his feet and delivering heavy, solid punches. Oh, those are well picked. He looks dangerous. Mozakabala's landed with his own fair share. But I have to say that the most damaging punches are coming from Ampofo, and he's looking very strong. Well, if Mozakabala wants a tear up, I'm sure Ampofo will be happy to oblige. A stumble, he just, just sort of flung him over there. They hit him around the back of the head. Oh, oh good, good left. short left hook. Got it, off. Hardly blink, got, it, got it off. Perfect. No, he hurt him with that. He's hurting him with all of those shots because look at that right uppercut. That's a great shot. A left hook, too, and he's. Mosakabala stumbled back there, getting his footing proper again. And this is, you know, it's impressive that he's fighting back like this, but this is the wrong tactics. He can't hope to last 12 rounds against Ampofo if he fights like this. Yeah, we know that Ampofo can go 12. Oh, Good right. back and right. Oh, body Masakabala shots are hurt. really hurting Mosakabala. He's shot to the body and he's just pick, picking all his shots on Puff and putting all the weight. Look at the way he threw himself off balance there with him because he missed with that shot. There's, there's plenty of weight behind him. Every one of these shots are meant to hurt. Last 10, this is de developing into a good fight. And Uncle Bala trying to convince himself that he's not, he's not hurt, but he's hurt all right. Well, we never know with fighters from Africa. I remember when Alfred Cote came over and fought Danny Porter and made Porter sort of a reasonable favourite to start. And uh, Cote, I have to say, with all due respect to Danny Porter, Cote took him apart and is now a genuine world-class, world-ranked fighter. I don't think Albert Musankabala is in Alfred Cote's class, though. I can't comment on that because I didn't see Cote, but... You'd have enjoyed it. Yes, I'm sure I would have. I've heard a lot about the young man. I believe he's a very, very exciting prospect indeed. Corners, 10 seconds. Bala. Was like a Bala came Stand forward down, here and threw, threw lots of punches, but most of them clipped and puffed around the arms. And the heavy quality punches were landed by young Puff. Third round. First two rounds you'd have to give to Francis Ampofo. 
can't call them a challenge. It was they're both challenges to a vacant title. Good work from Mpoko. He's, he's really working that body well. He's, he's obviously worked very hard in the gym. No one in this guy has come down and wait. And he's been told that he's hurting him. He doesn't need to be told. He can see that he's hurting him. Oh, Good cracker right into the pit of the stomach with that left hook. And you can see for yourselves, he, he's so well muscled, Francis Ampofo. We, we, we've often referred to him as a little pocket battleship, and I can't think of a better description of the man. Yeah, but you only have to take one look, look at him and, and know what way to fight him. You don't stay inside with someone like this, you stay on the outside. And, and I'm oh, oh, beautiful right hand. Oh, good what shot. Cracker. That was the punch that Armour did for him. Count Perfect. is seven, eight, nine, nine out. It's such a professional performance. This kid is hurt now. Get him back to the stool. That's a cracking performance for Francis. First round Pope. knockout. And the new Commonwealth flyweight champion. Well, that'll be one for little Olivia. There he goes to see, see Emma. Herbie hides there. <laughs> and a quick word for poor old Albert. Worth that lockdown, worth another look. Yeah, it was a super performance. He just, he was so clinical in, in his performance tonight. He just knew what he was doing. Very assertive indeed. Put his shots together. Worked the solar plexus and picked all the shots around the body and then switched them over the top. He got this hand, guy's hands down. That was the finishing right hook. Absolute beaut. That's going to be a, a punch for the best knockout of the year. Next season, the awards. Presenting the trophy to the winner, ladies and gentlemen. So, the new we have a new champion, and we have more action left for you as well. Michael Aldis against A.D. Benton. That fight is next after the break. And can we have your appreciation, please? For the